Hi, I'm Bronwyn Mayer Henry, and I want to share with you some of what I've learned in my creative practice and how stepping into a creative practice can help you develop skill and capacity to be present with difficult moments in your life. For me, I have found my creative practice has transformed and rewired my brain and my way of thinking. Creativity is not a hobby, it's not a distraction, it's not always even a comfort. For me, the creative practice is the opposite of numbing. Oftentimes when we step into creative practice, we find a spaciousness that is both rewarding and confronting, allowing us to be present with thoughts and feelings we haven't spent time with in the busy rush of our daily life. I want you to consider this example from life. So have you ever sat in a way in which your foot falls asleep? You can't feel it. And what do you do to wake your foot up? You move it. And how does it feel when you start moving that foot that's been asleep? It's painful, pins and needles, shooting pain. If you didn't know better, you would sit back on that foot and think, I better not move it again, that's painful. But you have experience and you know that the pins and needles pass and then you have full mobility of your foot again. To me, creative practice is the same way. When we first step into the movement of creative practice, we may experience discomfort, even pain. But my experience is if you stay with it, if you move through that, you gain more mobility and movement in your life. Creative practice allows me to be present with grief, loss, anxiety, and all different challenges, both in my life and that I is happening in my friends' lives or that I read about happening around the world. I want to invite you to do a creative practice that I use regularly when I create paintings. And there's three steps. The first step is setting an intention. When you set an intention, mine are not focused on outcomes. So it's not like, I wanna create a beautiful piece of art, or I hope to capture the beauty of this sunflower. Not possible. <laughs> or not a, not a grounding intention, not one that helps guide me through the creative practice. So what I do for intentions is I take a heart space to the canvas. My intention is always around a longing in my life or if I'm working with a, a client, a longing in their life, a prayer for them, hope and intention for them. So I want you to reflect. What is on your heart? What's breaking your heart? What's got you staying up at night? What wakes you up in the middle of the night? What are you afraid of? What are you worried about? What are you trying to decide? Reflect on that. You might write some notes down. And then think about what wisdom, what goodness, what kindness do you want to call into that part of your life? What are you longing for? What would help you through this time? And write that down. For me, when I'm creating paintings, I write on them with chalk and intention. It's oftentimes, I, I enjoy words, so it's oftentimes quite long, but yours could be quite brief. And then I paint over that intention. I want to give you a couple examples because I've spent a lot of time with this and you might be new to it and that's okay. Just stay with the process. Have fun. You can be as brief or as, as long as you want. But I want to give you a few examples. So imagine that you're anticipating a surgery and you're nervous about it. You're anxious about the outcome. You're anxious about uh, going under all the things. So you might write on your canvas or on a note card as an intention for your creative practice. May I be courageous in stepping into this vulnerable space? May I be open to healing? I tend to write longer things, but I'm trying to keep it brief here. Let's say the thing on your mind is making a decision. You might write on your canvas, may I be guided in this time of possibility? May I be led? May a way open that I haven't thought of? May I feel clarity and confidence in this step? Perhaps you're navigating a relational conflict and you wanna hand that over in the creative practice. You might say, may a new connection be established. May new ways of being together be found. May we each soften to kindness and forgiveness. Perhaps you're navigating eco-anxiety as many of us are. And oftentimes many of our challenges a solution is not in sight. That is why there are challenges. And these are heartaches, but we can still bring them to the canvas. So we might write in the face of eco-anxiety, may 
I be open more than I'm overwhelmed to the way forward in this time. May I be protected from debilitating fear. May I be creative and bold in my actions to offer kindness and compassion to people, to animals, to this earth. May I not feel alone as I face this time. So pause the video here and reflect for yourself. What are the intentions you want to call into your life? Okay, step two is spend time in creativity. I'm less interested in which format and more that you step into a creative practice. It might be writing haikus, it might be photography, you might love drawing, you might play with watercolor or acrylic or oil paints. You pick the form, but spend time in your creative practice and keep this intention nearby. You're gonna get distracted, that's normal. It's very similar to meditation. Uh, you're gonna think of things to do. You're gonna have regrets about something you've said recently. Oh, this is just what happens for me. Stay with it, stay with the creative practice and return your attention to the intention. You might have a note card nearby. When you find yourself distracted, bring yourself back to that intention. May I be open more than overwhelmed. It might be a really simple phrase that emerges as you use as a kind of mantra or repetitive centering phrase. The third step is to reflect. When, the, when your creative time comes to a close, I want you to reflect. Is there anything that this creative practice has taught you? Was there any connection you can make between what you've been focusing on and your intention? I often find the specificity of what I'm creating has something to speak into my life and my heart and my heartache. In this process, include any frustrations. You might be feeling like, this is not going how I planned it, or I don't know way, the way forward, or someone else could do this better. These feelings we have at the canvas are the same ones we have in our lives. And just bring kindness there. Bring kindness there. Bring kindness to how it feels to not know the way forward, which often is where we find ourselves in our heartache. I wanna close with a quote from Pema Chodron. She says about meditation, that we do not meditate to become better meditators. We meditate to become better people in the world. And it's the same thing to me in the creative practice. We do not create to make beautiful objects. We step into creative practice to become more loving and compassionate people in the world. So I hope you will give yourself permission to play with the creative practice, to weave in this intention, and to see what wants to be revealed in your heart and in your life.